Morning, everyone. So over the last eight days, we've been looking at Ka and Kb calculations. Uh, pretty much how we can uh, utilize ice tables uh, to figure out. Uh, we know the ionization constants are so tiny, but we can actually calculate how many protons end up at equilibrium. Uh, we can find the pH, pOH. Uh, we got some practice there. Uh, today, I'm just going to do a few other spin-offs uh, that deal with uh, similar style problems. Uh, we're going to see how titration uh, comes back into these uh, calculations as well, uh, but pretty much sort of revolving around uh, Ka uh, style calculations. So uh, there's actually three separate applications I want to go over with you uh, in this lesson. Uh, first application is going to be something we refer to as partial neutralization. Right. Now we know the word neutralization. Neutralization is an acid and a base. It cancels out to become a salt and water. Uh, what this partial neutralization introduces is, especially for acids that are polyprotic, that have more than one proton to begin with, you can actually neutralize any number of protons. So just let me give you a feel of this here. Starting off with H2SO4. H2SO4 is a strong acid, but it's actually only strong uh, just for the first protonation. What we're going to do is we're going to react this H2SO4 here with NaOH. Normally, you would balance it right away and you go H2SO4 with two uh, NaOH. How I know that is because H2SO4 has two H's. I need two hydroxyls to cancel out. That would end up forming you Na2SO4 and then uh, two parts water. So salt and water, some generic ionic compound and water. What I want to do this time is I want to just separate. Well, this actually takes place in two different steps. Step one actually involves H2SO4 losing its first proton. Again, that's going to be the strong one. It's ionized 100% anyways. If H2SO4 was just reacted with one mole of NaOH, what we would end up with is we'd actually get Na. The hydroxide would have canceled out one of the H's. We'd still be left with HSO4, which by itself is actually a weak acid. That's going to end up forming one of your waters. It's just that that's not completely done yet. In step two, we're going to then take uh, that remaining HSO4 uh, titrate it against NaOH, and we're going to get rid of the second proton. So we're going to take the NaHSO4 formed in the first step, react with NaOH, and that's going to end up finally giving you the Na2SO4, and this gives you water. So that's sort of like a mechanism here. You can start seeing, well, we have the NaHSO4 is an uh, intermediate, and we end up with HSO4 with two NaOHs, gives you Na2SO4 and two waters. We can actually use this to our advantage to actually calculate, well, as I slowly add in base, slowly we're going to pull sort of one proton at a time. It never is going to be so simple as just, let's just deprotonate the first proton, and the only once all of them are gone, then we start deprotonating the other one. It does depend on how the NaOH actually runs into uh, these other molecules here. There's a certain, oh, by the time maybe 70% or 80% has been deprotonated, we now have enough NaHSO4, and now that one there can end up being neutralized. So. Uh, in this sort of partial neutralization section, we just want to calculate roughly, well, based on how much acid and base I've actually neutralized, how many protons have I actually got rid of. So uh, let me just do this by a quick question here. When 35 milliliters of 0 0.0475 molar uh, citric acid, citric acid is actually triprotic, so it's actually has in three protons, H3A, uh, is neutralized with uh, 27.8 milliliters of 0 0.120 molar uh, sodium hydroxide. Uh, the question is framed a little bit strangely. It just says, how many protons uh, on average have been neutralized? Uh, so let's just uh, draft this out a little bit here. So we have a triprotic acid. I don't know the rest of the formula, so I'm just using A as a placeholder. Well, being triprotic, this thing here can actually donate three protons in total. Uh, first proton, it's going to then, it's going to lose an H plus. It's going to go down by an H, go down by a charge, H2A minus. Well, I still have two protons. The H2A minus can then donate another H plus, becoming uh, HA minus two. And lastly, the HA minus 2 can also deprotonate, uh, get rid of that H plus, and end up giving you A minus 3. So this one potentially can end up giving you uh, three protons. We want to know, based on these relative amounts, I must be at some equivalence point, but maybe I haven't added in enough base to completely neutralize all three of the H3As. All this is going to entail is for you to actually figure out, well, how many moles of acid are we actually using? 
So I'm going to take the volume, 0 0.0350 as liters, multiply it by concentration. That's going to end up giving you uh, the moles of chemical. So 0 0.035 times 0 0.0475. On average, I've dropped in roughly 1.67 times 10 to the negative 3, sorry, 6, 6, uh, moles of your acid. Uh, how many moles of base have I dropped in at this point here? Usually we'd imagine the titration is complete. Usually we imagine, oh, this is for all three protons. But for this style question, I want to know which equivalence point I've actually reached. So how many moles of base have I added? 0 0.0278 uh, liters times up by 0 0.120 molar, uh, 0 0.0278 times 0.12. Uh, this gives me here roughly 3.34 times 10 to negative 3 moles. And all we're going to do is we're just going to do a ratio. Since I want the ratio between sort of H3A is going to react with some number of NaOH, I just want sort of the mole ratio between base to acid. So what if I did uh, moles of base that I've added divided by the moles of acid? Right? So the moles of base that we had, I added in roughly 3.34 times 10 to negative 3 divided by moles of acid, I just calculated as 1.66 times 10 to the negative 3. And let's see what we end up getting here. Uh, this number divided by 1.66 e negative 3, this gives me roughly about 2. Right? So at this equivalence point, there's actually three equivalence points. I can actually deprotonate just one proton, two protons, three protons. At this uh, relative amounts here, it's like you've tossed in two NaOHs. So that's not completely neutralized yet. So what's going to happen is if I've deprotonated, if I've uh, got rid of two protons, I should still have uh, HA minus 2. So therefore, I now have the reaction, the neutralization is a one-way arrow. I've deprotonated two of them. It's like trying to balance it with this being a 2, even though I expect it to be a 3. I'm left with now Na2, uh, HA. HA has a minus 2 charge, so it makes sense that it uh, has two Na spectator ions, and then we would have generated two waters. So it's sort of a partial neutralization. We haven't completely neutralized it. I still have a few more protons to get uh, rid of, but at this particular equivalence point, you haven't uh, added yet enough base yet. Okay. So uh, just a small little spin off the question. For most of the questions that we did, like a Ka Kb calculation, we only do one proton transfers, even if it was diprotic or triprotic, and we just said, yeah, it's going to protonate uh, more later on anyways, but we're just going to deal with one proton at a time. So that is one application that we can deal with. The two other applications I want to deal with in this lesson here, one is referred to as a molar mass determination. Because the titration and these sort of calculations are helping you get how much unknown uh, amount is in solution, we can actually utilize this to actually find uh, the molar mass of some unknown solution. So let's just do this by way of a question here. Uh, if we start off with 2.500 grams of an unknown Diprotic acid. Right. So diprotic, again, sort of similar to this um, partial neutralization stuff here. Diprotic means you have two H's. I'm just going to write that as H2A. It's totally unknown. I don't know what the rest of it. It could be H2SO4. It could be H2S. It could be anything as a counterbalancing uh, nonmetal. Uh, 2.5 grams of this unknown diprotic acid is dissolved into 250 milliliters. So that's probably in a volumetric flask. Three 25 milliliter uh, samples. We can actually call them aliquots for fancy. Uh, 25 milliliter uh, aliquots are titrated to completion. That's what we're going to always be assuming. Unlike this partial neutralization stuff where, oh, maybe I've only added in base to kill off two protons. Um, but this is titrated completely. And it's titrated against with NaOH. For a titration, remember, for one of the chemicals, you have to know uh, the concentration. So this chemical here is uh, 1, 0.1328 molar NaOH. And I'm going to give you uh, the sort of uh, the readings experimentally. Uh, the initial Barrett reading. So remember, the Barrett is the long glass tube. Uh, it has the zero mark on top, the 50 mil mark on bottom. We take a starting reading. After our titration is done, we take an ending reading. Uh, this is going to be VI. That's your initial reading. We would have done this here, let's say, three trials. Right? In science, we want things to be reproducible. Uh, I don't really care where things start, so I just want to oh, fill it something more than half. I don't want to have to reload sort of in-between solutions. Every time I reload, it's going to end up introducing error. 
I'm going to start off with a solution marked at 10.00, and this one turns out, the first one is just sort of a rough trial. Oh, it turns out it goes pretty much right down to the 50, and this one, actually the final Barrett reading, the final uh, volume of the NOH that I'm dropping in, the final Barrett reading is actually uh, 49.3. Six, seven, right? Usually the first one is just an approximate anyways. I notice, okay, I'm needing some 39-ish or so. I definitely don't have enough in the bread. So reloading in between trials is fine. You just can't reload during a trial. So I'm just going to reload here. Maybe I'm going to have um, topped it up here. So now it says 5.50. Gives me a little bit more leeway on the bottom here. And then as I just sort of drop it in some more here, uh, this one here, I do the titration when the color changes, when I know when to stop, it says 44.82. And again, this one here, oh, it's, um, again, I don't have enough solution here. So then I'm gonna reload one more time here. Maybe the Brett uh, reading says 7.21, and later on it ends up reading 46.86. So again, I wanna emphasize here what you're doing you're not actually calculating how much volume is in the bread. All you're doing is you're taking a reading, what does the bread say right now? After your titration is done, what does your bread say at the end? What we want is we actually want the difference in volume. The difference actually tells you how much you've actually added. So we're going to just subtract these here, 49.67 minus 10. This one here gives you 39.67. Uh, we're going to go 44.82 minus 5.5. This gives you 39.32. And then 46.86 uh, minus 7.21. And this gives me here 39.65. Right. Now remember, these are three trials of the same test, even though they came in sort of three different uh, sections here. Uh, we want to be really, really precise. So if these three numbers were all really different from each other, i just average all three of them. I notice trial one and trial three are a lot closer to each other than trial two. What you can do is you can uh, assume trial two, maybe that was an outlier, this one's the odd one out, and I'm just going to average the other two here. What is the average volume? And this is uh, NAOH that I'm adding. What's the average NAOH volume that I'm actually tossing in? If you average numbers, you just add them up and then divide it by, in this case, I'm averaging two numbers, that should give you 39.66. Uh, the common problem that I see sometimes people do, people remember they need to average, and they end up averaging. Oh, let's just average all these starting readings, let's average all these ending readings. Remember, the start and finish has no bearing on the situation. All we want is we want actually the difference. I didn't really care where the bread started or where the bread ended. I care about how much uh, volume you actually dispensed in. Okay. So, remember, those are three different trials here. Those three were aliquots. Each aliquot itself was only a 25 mil sample. So imagine having a 25 mil sample and imagine doing it three times. Uh, for each of these tests, uh, one took 39.67, the other 39.65, so now in total, 39.66. We've now been able to count how much this was any which I added, how much unknown H plus there was in solution. So let's just see if we can calculate uh, back for this concentration. Uh, what is the concentration of the amount of acid in solution? Uh, so concentration of H3A uh, here. This one here ends up giving you, oh sorry, this one here, uh, I was told earlier it was a diprotic acid, so this one should just be H2A. Um, we need to just sort of think uh, about an equation here. So if I have H2A and it's being neutralized with NaOH to completion, so I'm gonna have completely tossed in both the OHs that I would need, the mole ratio would actually be a 1 to 2 ratio, and this would end up giving you Na2A and 2 waters. So let's start off with the one that we know more. I know for the base, it was 39.66 milliliters. I knew the concentration earlier was 0 0.1328. For one of the concentrations, you have to know the molarity. For the other one, all three of my aliquots were 25 milliliter portions. I just didn't know what the concentration was, the molarity was. Okay. So even though it was a lot of work to actually get to these numbers here, at the end of the day, the titration problem always ends up, take the chemical that you know more, find moles, use the mole ratio to get over the other side, and use the final number to find the unknown concentration. So let's try it out here. Starting off with the base, 0 0.03966 liters, multiply it by 0 0.1328 moles for a liter, that's NaOH. For every two parts of NaOH, there's only one part of H2A, where you're very used to top unit cancels bottom unit doing this. At the end of the day, your concentration of H2A should be moles divided by liters. I actually want to keep that moles, 
even though after you dispense your solution, you've added some extra almost 40 milliliters in there. Now it's about 60 mils. I never care about the final volume. I just use the base to count how much H plus there is. The H plus is just sitting in the 25 mil uh, sample. So all you're going to divide by is divide by 1 divided by 0 0.02500 liters, and that gives you your unknown concentration of acid. 0 0.03966 times 0 0.1328 divide 2, divide 0 0.025, and this gives me here, the concentration of the acid that we found is actually 0 0.1053 molar. Now, of course, we would have actually destroyed the sample in trying to count how much H plus there is, but remember, concentration is intensive. Where did these 25 milliliter aliquots come from? They were actually coming from a solution that started off being 250. So let's do the last part of the question here. We started off with 2.50 grams. You can imagine that's a solid powder. I first take this and I dissolve it into 250 milliliters. The first container that it goes in, the final volume is actually 250. I don't have to titrate the entire sample. So what I do is I decide to take three 25 mil portions of this 250, although I would have uh, killed off 75 milliliters, at least I still have a lot of solution left over. The nice thing about concentration is concentration is intensive. If you imagine this was a picture of orange juice, you pour orange juice into three different glasses, the orange juice would taste the same, whether they're in the cups or whether they're in the pitcher. So now that you know the concentration of each of these aliquots, actually what I reacted with 0.1053, the concentration of the whole solution is also 0.53. And what you want to be thinking here is, well, if I had a solution that's 250, I'm making 250 milliliters of this liquid at this concentration, I need to add in enough powder for the concentration to be higher. The amount of powder in the 250 will be way higher than the amount of powder in the uh, 25. So this is sort of the last step here. I want to end up finding this unknown, I want to find the molar mass of this diprotic acid. I want grams per mole. I now have a way to figure out how many moles are in solution. I have the concentration of the pitcher. I know I added it enough to make 250 milliliters. Let's find moles and let's just take the 2.5 grams divided by this moles, and that would end up giving you the molar mass. So let's find here, um, what is the number of moles in the 250 milliliter, I'm going to call it the stock solution, because that was the starting, the initial concentration. This time we're going to use 0 0.2500 liters, that's the 250 milliliters. I multiply it by the same concentration, even though my aliquots uh, at only 25 milliliters, when you do the ratio, the 0 0.1053 applies to my whole solution as well. Uh, multiply point, uh, 1053 by 0 0.25, this gives me here, the moles in solution is 0 0.0263 moles. Okay. Actually, I have a lot of sig figs here, so it's four sig figs, so 0 0.02633 uh, moles. And finally, if you want to find the molar mass of this acid here, uh, I'm just going to use M again. That's This time it's going to be molar mass of your unknown acid. While molar mass would have units grams per mole, I have dissolved in 2.5 grams, and you manage to get 0 0.02633 in the uh, big picture. So 2.500 grams divided by this 0 0.02633 moles. Grams over moles gives you molar mass, so 2.5 divided by this gives us the molar mass of this compound here is some 94.93 grams per mole. This chemical here was known as a diprotic acid, so it's H2A. Uh, you could, let's say H is about a mass of 1, so therefore the A is about a mass of 92 or so. It could be an element, just one element that weighs 92, or it could be a polyatomic in total, end up adding up to give you 92. Okay. So you see how we can actually utilize uh, these sort of titration techniques here. It was titrated to completion, and we can actually figure out the unknown molar mass. Let's do one more application here. Uh, this last problem here is to find a percent purity of a compound. Uh, I'm just going to write the question for you and just let you try it out here. This time we're starting off, let's just do this by way of an example here. Uh, 5 grams of impure benzoic acid. Benzoic acid has a formula C6H5COH. It's an organic acid. This is also dissolved into uh, 250 milliliters. Uh, usually you could dissolve things into either 100, 200, or 250. It's just because the volumetric flask that we use, usually they come in those increments. So we have this 250 milliliters, just like we did earlier. I want to actually test using a titration, well, what's the concentration that I end up forming? 
a 25 milliliter, again your pipettes would typically have either 10 mils or 25 mils, a 25 milliliter sample or an aliquot is titrated. Titrated basically means it's reacted to completion. It's titrated using 31.84 milliliters of 0.1236 molar uh, KOH. I want you to calculate the percent purity. Okay. I'm going to draw you a quick picture and then see if you can apply what we just did in question number two uh, to solve this problem. I always like uh, just drawing out the procedure. I start off with five grams, so that's what my scale reads, is five grams, but we're told in this problem that this benzoic acid is impure. It's been embedded with a lot of other impurities here. Although you think of this as five grams, maybe not all of it is actually benzoic acid. First thing that you do is you dissolve it in a volumetric flask. Uh, the volumetric flask here is made up to 250 milliliters. So your first solution is five grams into 250 milliliters. So some of that benzoic acid would have been dissolved into here. Again, I don't want to destroy my whole sample in the process of trying to find the concentration. So what I then do is I just take a 25 milliliter aliquot, a 25 milliliter small portion of this, stick that in the Erlenmeyer, right? Uh, there's going to be a certain amount of benzoic acid here, a certain amount of H+, and what you titrate it against here is we're going to titrate it against KOH. KOH is in the base. I'm going to drop that into the solution. The KOH, I know the concentration, 0 0.1236 molar KOH, and they actually help you out here. This time, they don't give you starting reading, ending reading. They actually tell you, sort of on average, the difference in volume that you dropped in is actually this 31.84 milliliters. That's how much base you needed to have to basically kill off all the H plus uh, in order to find the concentration. So OH minus kills the H plus. Okay? So what we're going to do is sort of backtrack. I want you to find for me what is the concentration of benzoic acid inside this uh, aliquot, inside the sample that I'm testing. Because concentration is intensive, the orange juice, the benzoic acid here, the concentration molarity would actually be the same molarity over here. Well, I had dissolved in 5 grams to make 250 milliliters worth of the solution. You can figure out how many grams was actually benzoic acid, and then finally dividing by 5 would end up giving you the percent purity. Okay. So I encourage you to pause the video, try it out for yourself, and we'll see how we do. Assuming that you've done that here, we can try it out. Uh, benzoic acid here, although it looks like it does have a lot of H's, a carboxylic acid only has this one H to actually give up. So if I gave you the balance equation, C6H5COH, uh, this one here reacting with KOH, it's basically the OH is going to neutralize one of the H's. Neutralizations are one-way arrows, so uh, almost like a strong thing. This one here will end up giving you K-C6H5COO. Uh, Sometimes I even put the K on the very far side there, it doesn't really matter. And then this is H2O. For a titration, at the end of the day, you're going to have one chemical. I know the molarity at the base here. I know the volume that you dropped in was 31.84. Of the other chemical, the sample that I titrated was only 25 milliliters. So I'm not titrating against the entire 250 milliliter bottle that I did. Let's first find the concentration in the sample that I tested. Concentration is intensive. The taste of the orange juice here will be the taste of the orange juice in the entire picture. So let's find what is the concentration of the C6H5COH. Start off with the chemical that you know more. So let's start off with the volume, 0 0.03184 liters of KOH. Let's multiply the concentration, 0 0.1236 moles for a given liter. The mole ratio is 1 to 1. So for every one part KOH, there is one part of your benzoic acid, the C6H5COH. Again, we're used to the units canceling out. Remember this time, I want to keep the moles on top. I actually just wanted to end up dividing by liters on the bottom. Well, how many liters was in the sample that I was testing? This time, I only titrated against the 25 milliliters, so I'm going to divide it by 1 over 0 0.02500. Remember the whole point of doing a titration? I'm going to make a note here. This is the initial uh, acid volume. The whole point of doing a titration is to be really, really precise. So you're going to see calculations involving three sig figs or four sig figs. Make sure you don't accidentally just sort of round off uh, those uh, significant figures. So let's just type that all in there. What is the concentration of benzoic acid in this aliquot? 0 0.03184 times 0.1236 divide 0 0.025. This gives me a concentration of 0 0.1574. Sure, after I've added in the solution of base, 
uh, this solution here will be completely neutralized, but now we found the starting concentration used to be 0 0.1574. Again, because concentration is intensive, if the concentration here is 0 0.1574 molar, the whole picture would actually be 0 0.1574 molar. At this point here, you can do it one or two ways. You can pretend that the 5 grams was pure benzoic acid. You can use the molar mass and actually get it over into solution. Then compare it against the concentration. That would give you a fraction. I'm going to show you to you the second way here. Assuming that it's only benzoic acid that was able to react with KOH, you've now counted the true amount of benzoic acid in the solution. Since I have volume and a concentration, I can use that to find moles. I would need the molar mass to get to grams. I'd expect the actual benzoic acid from this impure block would be something less than 5, and then therefore I can divide by 5 at the really, really end to do it. So let's find out how many grams of benzoic acid in uh, the starting, uh, let's call it a pellet, okay, the starting uh, tablet. Okay, that's uh, so the tablet. Uh, I will need to go to the periodic table and find the molar mass, but first we're going to say, Yes, my solution was only testing the 25 mL aliquot, but remember concentration applies to the entire solution. I had enough benzoic acid in the tablet to actually make 250 milliliters worth of the solution. So let's take the 250 milliliters, 0 0.2500 liters. The concentration we calculated was 0 0.1574 moles for a given liter. We want to get to grams. Anytime you need grams, you need molar mass. So go to your periodic table and add up the bits here. So we have 7 carbons, 7 times 12, plus the 6 hydrogens, plus 6, plus 2 times oxygen, 16. And therefore, I get a molar mass here of 122. Uh, even if it's spot on 122, you still do one decimal place. And that gives you how many grams of benzoic acid are truly in the big picture. 0.25 times 0.1574 times 122 gives me here 4.801 grams. Uh, lo and behold, this is actually less than the 5 grams. So of the tablet, that was 5 grams. That's what the uh, mass balance said. We found out that only 4.801 grams is actually benzoic acid. We actually have a bunch of other gunk that's actually adding some mass. Now, it's probably not going to be all off to one side, but at least based on a purity argument here, to calculate the percent purity, it's sort of like the percent yield that we had been doing uh, last year, but we just say, well, if really there was 4.801 grams and the whole impure block was actually 5 grams, that's going to give us some fraction. Divided by 5 gives me here 0 0.9601. Remember, we can keep our sig figs here. So in percentage, you multiply by 100%. So this is a 96.01% uh, pure block of benzoic acid, a fairly high percentage purity. So just a few little spin-offs to this uh, titration uh, problems here. Uh, I would always encourage you to start off with a picture, right? Especially if, oh, I make a solution and then I just take some aliquots and I titrate it here. Just remember, concentration is intensive. Yes, I would have destroyed the sample in doing the titration, but fortunately, once I know the concentration, that then applies to uh, the entire picture itself, okay? So practice a few of those questions and let me know if you have any problems. Thanks, guys.